Well, hello, this is Kelly and I am the Mathematic Plumber and welcome to video four of the basic drainage waste inventing series. In today's video, we're gonna focus on sizing a basic drainage system and look at a bunch of code requirements around that. All code references will be made from the 2015 National Plumbing Code of Canada. If you haven't watched the first three videos in this series, I recommend that you do that. Otherwise, this might not make sense. Now, if we look on the far right side on the main floor, we will find a double compartment kitchen sink. Now in 2493, we need to locate sink and A, domestic and other small types with or without garbage grinders, single, double, or two singles with a common trap. And if we look at the minimum size of fixed drill outlet pipe, it is one and a half inches. And with that, we have one and a half fixture units. So the trap and trap arm serving that kitchen sink will be minimum one and a half inches. Now look at the drain though. It drains down through a full story that makes that a soil waste stack. Now the only thing draining into that soil waste stack is the kitchen sink, so it too will be one and a half inches minimum. At the base of that soil waste stack, we have a pipe that goes horizontal. That's called a branch. That is only serving that kitchen sink, so it too will be one and a half inches minimum. The next fixture I want to look at is this clothes washer, which is of domestic type. Notice the minimum size of fixture outlet pipe is NA or not applicable. That's because the manufacturer will build this pipe that comes out of the unit and it'll be of a varying size. However, the hydraulic load is two fixture units if you have a two inch trap. This will have a minimum two inch trap. So this tells me that the laundry stand pipe, the trap, and the trap arm are all two inches in size. Now what is this pipe right here? Well, we have a single fixture with its own vent. Therefore, this is a fixture drain. That too will be two inches in size. Now this pipe right here is the result of two or more soil waste pipes joining together. Therefore, we call it a branch. Now technically, we need to use tables to size a branch, but I said we're gonna keep it simple. I've got a two inch clothes washer and a one and a half inch kitchen sink. We are gonna have a two inch branch here. Now the hardest fixture to see here is the floor drain that's in the middle of the basement there. It is drawn really funny because I'm using a two dimensional drawing. So what we actually have there is a Y sitting on its side and some fittings that we can't see connecting that up. So that floor drain is actually in behind that branch pipe. Due to some code requirements, that floor drain would need to be three inches in size in this particular installation. That will be discussed in a future video. But just so we know, table 2493 says that a floor drain can actually be two inches in size. So it would be two fixture units with a two inch trap or three fixture units with a three inch trap. And now we've got another small length of horizontal pipe. That is the junction of two or more soil to waste pipes. Therefore, that is a branch as well. Now we're serving a three inch floor drain. Therefore, that branch will need to be three inches. So all we have left is a few vents. So let's start with the clothes washer. That was a clothes washer all by itself with its own vent. Therefore, that vent is called an individual vent. Now the individual vent is really, really simple to size. So let's look at some code clauses around that. 2582 number one. The size of individual vents and dual vents shall be determined using table 2571 based on the largest trap served. And two, when sizing an individual vent or dual vent, the length is not taken into consideration. Now when it comes to sizing vents, table 2571 is of utmost importance. Let's read clause 2571. The size of every vent pipe shall conform to table 2571. Now, as we move beyond the basic videos, we're gonna learn about more and more tables for sizing venting and all the nuances around that. But for right here and now, we're just gonna to stick to table 2571 because for the most part, it's gonna be able to size up almost every single vent that we need for a basic home design. The best part about table 2571 is that it is very easy to read. If you look on the left-hand column, it says the size of trap served. Now we're looking at the clothes washer that has a two inch trap. So I go down to two inches, and then I go across to the right. Minimum size of vent pipe is one and a half inches. Now that clause about sizing individual vents said something about not taking length into consideration. For most vents, you actually have to measure the vent in meters and then apply that to a table. But for individual vents and for dual vents, you don't need to measure it. So we don't have a developed length for it. We don't care. That could be 100 meters long, it could be five meters long, it doesn't matter, it's inch and a half, it's done. Now let's look at this little vent pipe coming off the top of the soil waste stack from the kitchen sink. Now that is called a stack vent. 
And we're going to use table 2571. We have a one and a half inch trap on the kitchen sink. Therefore, we need a one and a quarter inch vent pipe. Now we'll see that the stack vent goes up and it intersects with the individual vent right there with a the TY. There's a couple things we need to talk about right there. The first thing I want to point out is the orientation of the TY. Notice how it looks like it's upside down. Well, that's how we put it in for venting because the general flow of air is going up through the terminal, which is the part that pierces the roof. The other part is we have that individual vent from the clothes washer, which is one and a half inches, is intersecting with that stack vent, which was one and a quarter. That means the resulting vent pipe that travels over to the main stack needs to be one and a half inches minimum because we would never reduce that vent pipe size. So yes, a vent pipe can get bigger as it goes closer and closer to the terminal. The last thing I want to point out about that is we have an individual vent, which is a minor vent, joining into a stack vent, which is a major vent, and whenever that happens, the major vent will keep its name, meaning that resulting vent pipe that is going to go up and over to the main stack will still be called a stack vent. And we have one more vent pipe to take care of here, and that's a little length that goes from here right through the roof. Now, this is three inches because this is a part of the main stack, but I have two stack vents joining together. Two major vents joined together, the resulting vent pipe is the president or the big daddy of all vent pipes called the vent header. So yes, this vent header will be three inches in size and it will increase one pipe size before passing through the roof. Now this is to prevent frost closure on cold winter days in areas like where I live. This rubber device that goes around the pipe and goes underneath the shingles is called a roof flashing. This prevents rainwater from coming down around the pipe and making its way into the building. It makes a watertight seal. None of my diagrams actually show the roof flashing, but they need to be there according to clause 2565 5B. The last thing I want to point out comes from clauses 2565 number 5 and 6. That vent pipe needs to extend at least 150 millimeters or about 6 inches above the roof line. And also, if it were a different vent penetrating from something else, it would need to be minimum 3 inches. Say, for example, that kitchen sink went straight up with the stack vent right through the roof. I would need to increase that one and a quarter inch pipe to three inch before passing the roof to protect from frost closure. Now I do have a slightly modified diagram here and I wanna go through this because there's some very important things that we need to pick apart here. Let's look at this powder room that's down in the basement. A powder room is a small bathroom that has a sink and a toilet and that's it. We have a drainage arrangement here that we have not talked about yet. This is a wet vented system with this bathroom. If you look, the water closet has no vent, or better yet it does, but it goes through a drain that comes down from that lavatory sink. We call that a wet vent, meaning it's a pipe big enough to act as a drain and a vent at the same time. The minimum size of a wet vent serving a water closet is two inch. Now wet venting is rather involved and has many codes around it. So what we're gonna do is take care of that in its own video series. But we can go and look at that vent pipe coming off the top of it. That is a continuous vent. If we use table 2571 based on size of largest trap serve, we would look at that water closet. That has a three inch trap. Therefore, that continuous vent needs to be minimum one and a half inches. And when we continue downstream of this Y, we have a branch. And that branch will need to be three inches because we're serving a water closet, which is three inches. What I really need to point out is right here at the base of the soil away stack we need to point out a very important code clause that you need to know. Clause 2492, number two. Branch and building drains downstream of the third water closet fixture drain connection shall not be less than four inches in size. So I have two water closets draining through the soil away stack, but as soon as I make it to the building drain, I'm adding a third water closet. That means that building drain now needs to be upgraded to four inches in size minimum. Now the reason why I bring this up, it's very common for houses today to have three water closets. Well, that was a lot to take in, so well done if you stuck it out right to the end here. Stay tuned for my next video where we talk about how to grade pipe, calculating pipe grades, and trap arm code requirements. Until that point, you have yourself an excellent day.